follow-up video. So I found a scope for it. It's a, it's been slobbered on. It's a Vortex uh, Crossfire seven, two to seven. And uh, it has, this is the original Scout rifle, which they have that mount up front for like a handgun scope. I actually don't like it. I mean, I've thought about it and you could probably learn to use it. I just like the larger field of view you get from a normal scope position. Yeah. So I got a, a cantilever mount and just reversed it. So we'll see if that works. Uh, no guarantees there, it's an experiment. Um, this is the same exact setup that we had on that uh, patrol, that MVP Mossberg. Uh, the one thing I know from our last review is using this peep sight and this cheek rest for me, just because of my, I guess, blocky face, uh, I could barely see oh. the front sight because this is too tall. And I dug out the bag full. They give you, a, I don't know, half a dozen of interchangeable ones, and they all are bigger than this. Oh. <laughs> so that's not, I mean, it might be better for the scope now that we have one on there. Uh, the other thing, too, that was kind of cool is these are all removable for uh, spacers. And then it has a really nice cushy limb saver. So between this part and then this, this giant muzzle brake on the end, it actually dampens it down. Although I don't want to rob you of your first experience on the 450 Bushmaster. <laughs> uh, I hope it delivers on your expectations. But we, you and I are both coming from the perspective of you've got your uh, 458 SOCOM. Right. And I've got the the uh, 50 Beowulfs, and both of us have been a little disappointed with their overall performance. Yeah. The cartridges are an awesome design, but the implementation we've just fought with. So it may be possible that even though this is a bolt action, uh, I may jettison the 50 Beowulf and move to the 450 Bushmaster. Uh, the other thing that came up in our last review is, can you use long magazines? Somebody suggested mounting them from the front back I think that's what he sa suggested, so we'll see. But you weren't with us on the first time, but these actually shoot loose. They rock loose, and I suspect it's from the giant recoil. Okay. And when, and this isn't fully loaded, but that would be a lot of mass hanging down like that. Yeah. So I could see where it could knock itself out. But for the first time, first shot's fired for you. We'll just try that. These are uh, 300 grain, jacket hollow point, uh, Bushmaster Federals, so... How about it? I have no idea where the scope's gonna hit. And uh, if you wanna try the trigger first, it's a beauty, cause it's a savage. And I do like that giant lug. Oh yeah. Not too bad. Not bad at all. To me, that makes it makes or breaks a, a rifle's accuracy, is uh, how, how much you have to fight that trigger. So that that has a little bit of play, no big deal. Not as much as that, uh, oh yeah, that was interesting. Did you see that? When you move that, oh, the yeah. little release lever does move. Oh yeah. So it's possible on those heavier, longer ones that it's knocking itself loose. We'll try it though. Could be. And see. All right. The 25 yards, uh, I, I like I said, I'm not vouching for where the scope even hits. Well, you've been pretty good so far today. Well, that's just lucky. It's not your grandpa's 22. <laughs> no. Yeah, this has a crowd pleaser muzzle brake as well. I can I can participate from a distance. Yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> oh man. You should be back here. <laughs> All right, let's go have a look at that. That's pretty amazing. We're gonna try that longer mag. It's not fully loaded, but you know, the thing we were looking at is the way you can actually, you can see that moving as the magazine moves. So if that's enough to knock itself out, we'll see. But that feels pretty stout and pretty locked up to me. Okay, 25 yards. Dang it, I over adjusted. Now it's hitting the exact amount left. 
Wow. Pull that one a little. All right. Okay. So uh, the other thing that we noticed is that the magazine did not pop out this time. Okay, new shooter. Just, I think it's uh, it's on now. I was just barely off. Wow, same hole. Yeah. Oh shoot, that's it, sorry. Nope, that's good. What I do you mean, think of the, the uh, 450 Bushmaster? Uh, I like it a lot. That's, I mean, <clears throat> it's extremely accurate for a couple clicks that you guys have just made. Yeah. It's, and this is uh, only 25 yards off a of sandbag, yeah. but still. But still, and um, yeah, it feels uh, like Dave said it feels more like my forty five seventy. Mm -hmm. But it's an awesome gun. And Dave said the limb saver is over build. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this scope too a lot. Well, it's got good relief too, which I think you need for these long, yeah, you know, for these heavy heavy rounds. Um, probably good like placement and mounting it up to your shoulder takes care of most of that, but still. Um, I'm, I torqued this to 35 pounds, so I hope that base stays there. I think that's actually going to work as a solution. I didn't want, you can actually replace this, uh, the rear sight here, but I wanted to keep the sight too, just yeah. in case. So I wasn't sure if this whole approach would work with the cantilever reversed, but it looks like it is. So yeah, I like it. Is the cantilever open so you can still, still use the iron? Uh, actually, I think it is. I don't uh, know if you can see through it though. Let me see. No, the base just blocks it. Just too high. Yeah. Still too thick through there. Yeah. Anyway, all right, well, I think that's pretty good for today. Let me let me just try a couple rounds at 50 and then yeah. we can wrap it up. I'm melting already. <laughs> all right, ready? Yep. Okay, we're gonna take this out to 50. Right. Come on. There we go. Ooh. Oh, man. Flinch. I'm spent. <laughs> I won't show you that one because I'm just way off. That's a disservice. 